welcome back it will mean a lot to me if you can hit the like button so that our videos can reach higher audience now in this video we want to talk about some very important concepts in python functions called the scope of a variable now let's demonstrate this with an example if we define a variable called x equals one here and then on the next line we redefine it to be let's say five all right now let's print x and see something and now if you run this we are getting s to be five but what about if you print let's say s three times okay if you run this we are getting five 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 so anywhere or everywhere in this program that we call s we are getting five right that is s is five everywhere in this program so let's write a function and let's re demonstrate this with another scenario let's define a variable called x again equals let's say two and then we define a function called let's say any func all right then this function simply return x so if we call this function we print any func and let's run this and see what we get we are getting s to be two now we didn't define this variable s in the function in this any function right but we are able to access it because this variable that we have declared here it's a global scope or a global variable so it can be accessed anywhere in our program but let's put another x here and let's say s is equal to three all right and let's run this function and see what we get for s our reformatting is giving us spaces that we don't want but that is a normal way to format programs if you run this we are getting s equals three why this is a global variable right but here this is a local variable a local variable can be accessed only in the function that it was defined in right so this local variable can never be accessed outside this function so right now if we try to print s again here let's say print s right if we compare it with the first example that we did after we define s to be one and then we redefine it to be five anywhere that we printed x we got five right so here we expect that anywhere that we print s we should get what three right but let's run this program and see what we get we are getting the first one to be three and the second one we are getting x to be two that is the global variable why what this means is that as i said earlier local variables are only peculiar to the function within which they were defined they can be accessed outside it right so after we redefine x in this function to be three after that it was done x cannot be fine again okay so if you comment this one out this global variable out right and then we try to print x here we will get an error so let's run this and see the first one we got s to be three right but the second one we don't have x there is a feature in python called garbage collector as soon as it's done using a certain function or a certain code it just throw it away all right throw it in the dustbin the trash it doesn't keep it so that it can freeze the memory all right otherwise our memory will be full so this is some difference that we should take note of that if you define a variable in a function like this you have to know that that variable can never be accessed outside the function actually we look at the way that we can access the variable outside but if you define it like this way then there's no way that you are going to access that variable outside the function it's a local variable all right to the function and then the variables that are outside or that were defined before the function are called what global variables so if you define a variable this way two variables with the same name then the python interpreter will treat them as two separate variables right the first belongs to the global scope or global variable and then the second belongs to what the local scope all right so we should take note of that now you should also note that local variables or local scope variables can be accessed by another function or another inner or nested function within the function in which they were defined okay let me demonstrate this by or with an example so if we 
define another function here called inner func, all right? And then here, we want our inner function to return x rather, all right? Let's not forget to bring the colon here. And then after, we want to call our inner function here, all right? So here, we want to call our inner function. That is, after we have returned x in the inner function, we want to return our inner function here, okay? So if we run this function now, we expect that we get 3, right? Okay, we are getting none because we didn't return anything. We just printed or we just placed this inner function here. So actually, we have to return a value, right? And then we are returning the inner function. So if you run this, we are getting 3. So a local variable can be accessed by what? A function that is nested within its parent function. Okay? Now, mind you, don't try to run the inner function okay or you want to access the inner function so let's print inner function and see what we get you see it's not even defined this inner function is only within this function so after you have nest a function and you want to use it always call the parent function not the nested function all right let's take note of that so that we will not to we will not be making mistakes now the way the scope of a variable works in python function is that first it checks its local scope all right so we have defined here the inner function that it should return x so it will check its local scope that if any x is here right it checks it didn't get it then it goes back to its parent or enclosed function to see if it can get the x okay so it checks here and then it gets the x and then it retains that x okay but let's remove this x and then let's see something let's see let's see let's see here we return max as simple as that what the interpreter is going to do is that it will first check within its local scope that it will get a new variable and then check the parent here all right to see if it will get any variable here it didn't get then the next thing is it will go to the global scope to check if it will get any variable it didn't get then lastly it checked built-in functions so if we run this function we won't get any error okay so if we run this function we are getting built-in function max so that is how the scope works it starts from the local then it checks the parent or enclosed function then it checks the global scope and then lastly it checks the built-in functions so here if you put any two values here or any values that we want let's say 100 and let's say 5 and we try to check the mass you get 100 right so that is how the scope works earlier on i said that once you make a variable a local variable in a function you can't access it outside its scope right but let's see how we can use the global keyword to access or make a local variable be available in the global scope okay so if you define a function for let's say func and then here we say let's say s equals 10 right and then here we return x okay so we come here and then we print func all right if we run this we know that we are getting 10 but after that if we print s we know that we are going to get an error because s is not defined in the global scope is defined in the hot only the local scope so what about if you want to access this s in the global scope all right we want to use it outside its local scope then we have to use the global keyword to define our variable s so first you have to let the global keyword come up and then you put the variable name here so after that you define the variable and thereon if you try to access that variable you will get it okay so here if you try to access s we will get it to be 10 all right as many as you want if you try to access s it is now available in the global these are some very important concepts that we are going to use to build some important projects all right so we have to understand it now so let's check the example that we did in acts and quarks all right 
so let's say we take this total variable from here and then we put it outside the function okay we put in the global scope and now let's run ax and quacks and see what we get if we run it we are getting an error cannot access local variable total where it is not associated with value we are trying to access total here but it's not defined in this function right but we said that once a variable is defined in the global scope then it's accessible everywhere you can access it everywhere in the program but why is it that we are getting an error here if we try to access it here because inside this function is another statement called the for loop all right so if we want to actually make this total variable accessible by this for loop then we have to make sure that or tell this for loop where to search for the total variable and where is this total variable it's in the global scope so simply you can just put global total and we are done and then you are telling the for loop that if it searches the global scope it can find a variable called total so now if we run this we are getting total to be 46 all right as simple as that let's go back to our example now what can the global variable be used for again if you want to change the value of a global variable inside a function and everywhere in the program you can use the global keyword okay so let's say here we define a variable x to be let's say two right and then without this global keyword let's comment this out and let's actually run this function we are getting the first one to be 10 because the local variable is 10 all right but the other ones we are getting to be true because we say that after the function is done running it delays the global variable from it right so we can assess it but we know that we have re uh, redefined x in the global scope so this print here assesses the global scope variable but what about if we want to actually tell our python interpreter that no this s here and this s here are not two different things is the s in the global scope that we want to redefine to be 10 then simply you can put global s here and then if you run this function or this program now we are going to get 10 everywhere all the s's here is going to be 10 all right so you are going to get 10 it will be like the first one where we just declared s to be one and then we redefine s to be five and and s was five everywhere in our program right so that is what we have done here using the global keyword lastly we want to talk about a very important concept called non-local that is something that you will not normally see but let's discuss it now first we have declared our variable in the, this function called loca and then we define another nested function called inner and then we said we are declaring a non-local variable here what does it mean and then we redefine s to be non-local let's run this function and see what we will get you can pause it and guess and think around this and see whether your result will be right okay so if you run this code we are getting non-local non-local that is this first year inner x is non-local and then outer non-local what we are trying to do here is that we said a variable defined or a local variable can be accessed by what inner functions or nested functions that were defined in the function in which the local variable was defined right so what we are trying to do here is that we are telling the interpreter that no this variable here x that we are defining here it's not the local variable that we define here okay it's different so we are redefining s okay to be different from the local variable here so it's non-local that is simply what it means all right so that the value that we give x here will be the same throughout the program after this non-local keyword so if we comment this one out non-local keyword out and then we run this program it's only the inner function that is going to be non-local because after that we are out of the loop all right this will be like the ones that we have talked about previously you are declaring two different variables with the same variable name all right so once it's done with the first one it throws it away and then it comes to the next the second one 
So if we run this code right now, we are getting the first one to be non-local because we are just redeclaring this local variable here to be non-local in this inner function. You get it? But after this inner function was called, it just prints non-local and then it throws it away. X is no more. So when we call X again, it's going to check in the outer function that is this local function. It just works like the ones that we have explained in the or with the global scope. So these are some very important concepts that I think you should be made aware of. All right. Our next topic we are going to talk about comments and then doctrine. And later on, we see how useful Python functions can be for us. Okay. We are going to solve more examples and then talk about models and packages. Bye bye for now. See you in the next video.